Good afternoon, Commissioner Rodriguez, our great elected officials, bishops, and other religious leaders and honored guests. I am Roseanne Caruana, DOT Staten Island Borough Commissioner. Thank you all and welcome. Bring it on. <laughs> Thank you all and welcome to Staten Island. We are so excited to finally ride the Dorothy Day ferry boat. As a reminder, the inaugural boat ride will depart at precisely 12.30, immediately following the ceremony. In fact, we'll try to get you guys on the boat as soon as we can. So to begin our program, we will uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I am thrilled to welcome DOT's own Bernadette Harold, who will come here and sing our national anthem. Bernadette? Bernadette. Oh, sing. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Wow, Bernadette, I'm glad you got here because I would have never been able to sing like that. But thank you. Let's have a round of applause for Bernadette. So back in November, we officially commissioned the boat on a beautiful ceremony that many of you attended. We are so thrilled that the Dorothy Day will soon be carrying passengers and serving thousands of Staten Islanders each and every day. I know I am mostly speaking to an audience who know Dorothy Day's life and legacy, but for those of you who don't know, let me quickly explain why Dorothy Day was one of the great Americans of the 20th century. A convert to Catholicism, Dorothy Day was a founder of the Catholic Worker Movement during the Great Depression. The Catholic Worker, to this day, fights for the poor and hungry of our city. I know we have folks here from the Catholic Worker Association, so please, if you can just give a little wave, welcome, thank you. Some of them actually dispensed meals at a soup kitchen on the Lower East Side just this morning among the many houses of hospitality that the Catholic Worker still operate. Dorothy Day was a prolific writer. She edited the Catholic Worker Daily newspaper. While I understand it is no longer a daily, it is published and will be celebrating its 90th anniversary next week. Dorothy Day also authored seven books and even for a while wrote a gardening column for our very own Staten Island Advance. We are lucky to have some of her beautiful journal writing on the last page of the program. She was also a brave activist for peace and human rights. Unafraid to be arrested at protest, jailed many separate times over her life. But, but finally, and most importantly, Dorothy Day was a humble woman of God who attended Mass daily. She was called on to practice the works of mercy, and she did that work for justice and peace. She believed in the God-given dignity of all of us, and she saw Christ in the world around us and in the least amongst us. I, and I will, leave most of, I will leave most of this part of Dorothy Day's biography to Bishop O'Hara, but Day's divine inspiration means that Dorothy Day may someday, someday may be St. Dorothy Day. Now to our first speaker, offering a welcome. I am so pleased to introduce to you my boss, New York City's Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Idanis Rodriguez. 
Commissioner Rodriguez brings greetings from Mayor Adams, who is unable to attend. Every day, he and the mayor strongly support the operations of the Staten Island Ferry. Getting this $85 million ferry into the harbor is just a small part of that work. Commissioner? Thank you, Rosanne, and uh, the best commissioner, uh, fighting a good fight, you know, persuading residents of Staten Island, the whole city, about how we can continue reimagining the use of public space. You know, it would take time, years, decades, but reality is that New York City, we only have 350 square miles. That's all we have for 8.6 million people, 50 million residents coming in average last year, and before COVID, 65 million. So when we look at our street and we look at about the sidewalk, you think about how we are competing for space. I always tell people to make the comparison. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, which is more than Punta Cana and Casa de Campo. So in, so in that island, we have, right, in that island, we have 12 million people, but only 10 million visitors. But there we are 33,000 square miles. So here we only are. 350 square miles. So I think that it is important that we put a conversation in context about, you know, the Saba city so that when we think about our plan for the future, eh, that we definitely, you know, know that we are competing with a lot of different interests eh, for the city, for the street. DOT oversee is responsible for 27% of the land of New York City. So from roadway to sidewalk to plaza, you know, it is a big responsibility. But before I continue saying if you, I want to call for Margaret for joining my first deputy commissioner to also join big here with us. You know, let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> and I know that we have the leadership of the great Catholic Church, but I also would like to have Monsignor being with us here. He's the person that, you know, I'm here today as a result or support that I got from Catholic Charity before I was council member, before now I'm commissioner of DOT. And the members of the family, the members of the family also being the granddaughters, everyone, be closer to us. I think it is important that, you know, we highlight that how important this day is. You know, for generations to come, New Yorkers and visitors, they will be taking this ferry. And the name authority will never be away. I'm here as a result of the fight that her and her generation they took on in another place of this planet. In that case, it was about back in the Caribbean, but it was in the Catholic Church that, as I say, my oldest sister, she was working in a printing edition of El Amigo del Hogar, the friend of the house, which was the major news, newspaper magazine printed by the Catholic Church there in the yard. So back in the yard, as in any place of any other country, as also during those years, 100 years ago in this great city, there was a generation of people fighting for justice. And I think that, you know, it is important to talk about what Dorothy stands for. But the question is, are we ready to work, to walk on her shadow? Are we ready to follow her, her legacy? Are we ready to take into the immigrants as a new opportunity that we have to fight for them? You know, those immigrants that some people unfortunately look at them with a lot of bias. It's the same poor people that Dorothy say they are human beings. They have to be seen with dignity and respect. So for me, So again, like, you know, the son and daughter of anyone that you will see a street bender, anyone that crossed the border from El Rio Grande that ended here, that son and daughter could be the next engineer, building not only luxury building but also affordable housing. The son and daughter, the young person who crossed, who put themselves through college, as I did, also could be the next doctor who will be curing us or the children and grandchildren. So... Yes, I took the ferry together with Monsignor coming there, and we resolved the whole issue in five minutes. <laughs> so there's not going to be more injustice, right? 
We're going to be living in a world, in a city of dignity and respect. We're going to be living in a world that doesn't a ambition. Every person, every human being will have the opportunity to excel, to develop her talent or his talent. So for me, as a commissioner, and here representing Mayor Eric Adam, who couldn't make it today to say thank you uh, to all, everyone that follow Dorothy legacy. It's not only a name in the ferry. It's not only someone that did her work in the past. It's someone that continue alive, that continue to remember all of us, that here a few miles away from where we live, where the wealthy New Yorkers live, and the child who is born in that city that have all the opportunity to train as the next engineers, as the next planner, as the next doctor. A few months away, there's another child that is born in another sick code without those opportunities. Well, Dorothy fought for that. Dorothy fought to close the gap. And if we want to keep her alive, it's more than taking the ferry. It's continue fighting for justice. It's continue fighting for all of us. So, as, as Roseanne said, we're commissioning this great board back on a beautiful day back in November. And it's now so exciting to see the board ready to serve the public. And I'm so glad to see Martha Hennessy, Dorothy Day's granddaughter, back with us today. Nobody who was there will soon forget the force that Martha used to smash a champagne bottle on the stand of this board. Let's give Martha a big round of applause. And I, and I will tell my daughter, 16 and 10, you know, that her dad was so lucky and honored to be with you, remember your, grand, your grandmother. It was an honor to smash that champagne with you because we will never forget that day. Bishop O'Hara and Bishop Barner, also great to have you back with us. And again, Monsignor Kevin Sullivan, who I've been fighting together in Northern Manhattan, for the underserved members of Washington Heights, as we do citywide, providing working class New Yorkers, you know, immigration and, and services, fighting for food pantry, fighting for affordable housing. It, so for me, this day is a great opportunity for me to know that only in New York City, someone like me, someone that, that Dorothy Fofo could be saying, I came here to wash dishes at Old Henry Restaurant at West 4 and 6th Avenue. And my second job was doing sandwiches at Food Concept Corporation, one of those cafeterias at 55 Water Street, from where now I lead the largest transportation system in, in the United States of America. So, so those, you know, the, the, that, that's for me the, the moment where we had to, you know, continue building toward the future of this great city, only New York City. Someone like me, a non-Native American can be lead the larger transportation system of six men, six thousand men and women. We run by mark the largest service of anything, the largest ferry. We have 8,000 bridges and tunnels. We, large, we produce 50% of the asphalt. Last year, here in Staten Island, we became the first city that we missing plastic to recycle and turn it as an asphalt. So New York City has a lot to celebrate and a lot more, more to be done. There was a lot of people that helped us to be where we are today. From the finance team, we have Elizabeth Franklin, Joseph Sambi, and others in the Grand Division, that now that division is led by Paul Ochoa, one of my deputy commissioners. The elected officials who supported that funding were many, by special thanks to both Senator, Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand. And of course, I want to thank all the staff at New York City DOT who are here today and others who are paving, who are taking on the pothole because it's only in the spring, fall, and summer that the weather allows us to do that work. That's another thing that all New Yorkers, does, they also should know. And of that group, first and foremost, I want to thank John A. Garvey. Let's give John a big round of applause. I want you, John, to come forward here. Come on, uh, let's give him one. I want for everyone to give it. He is our guy who runs the ferry. Okay? He is a person that is responsible to work 365,000. Of course, he will be very busy on May 7 when the five borough bike tour, they will be also riding more than 30,000 cyclists in New York City 
touching each five borough, but ending here in Staten Island, running the larger bike tour in the whole in the United States and the second larger one in the in the whole world. So thank you, thanks John for all the work that you do. A week from this Sunday, it, as I say, we're going to be very busy here, and John, we're going to be leading together with the team at DOT. 30 days activism that I have, so it, it, her activism is something that for me, as I learn about her, I see that connection. Guys, sometimes people think that you are arrested, you participate in civil disobedience, and some people think that that's something wrong. Well, that's part of our value, right? That's not only part of Gandhi. That's not only part of Martin Luther King. That was something that also Dorothy did. And I can tell you, I've been arrested more than 15 times in a lot of peaceful civil disobedience, always fighting for working class and always fighting for peace. So for me, it was a great thing also to see that connection with her too. And at the council, I, I was trying to comply with any legislation, including those that created task force to look at the nuclear weapons that we have here in the whole world. So for me, it's like the work never stopped. Dorothy Day also fought alongside organized labor. So I want to once again honor DOT's own union workforce, which we are working so hard to grow and better reflect the diversity of our beautiful city. DOT is powered by, union, by unions employees across the agency, paving roads, maintaining bridges, and repairing sidewalks. However, today is a day we must thank the incredible works, workers of the Staten Island Ferry, who I know have faced serious challenges through the pandemic. Can we please give them a big round of applause? Too? <laughs> and maybe, and maybe on our trip to Manhattan, we all can also honor Dorothy Day the Spirit by offering a special thanks to the ferry workers for all they do keeping this service 365 days a year. Hoy, in one minute, because I, my language is Spanish, it's not English, my first one. So now in Spanish, eh, para mí un día muy importante, eh, a nombre del alcalde Regal, eh, reconocer el, la, el legado de Dorothy, una persona que dedicó su vida eh, desde la iglesia católica a trabajar por la persona más necesitada, a trabajar por la justicia, a trabajar por lo más pobre. La mejor forma de nosotros recordarla a ella mientras nos montamos en el ferry que lleva su nombre, es siguiendo luchando por lo que ella creyó, que todos los seres humanos deben de vivir con la dignidad y el respeto que ellos se merecen, que es posible seguir construyendo una sociedad donde todos los seres humanos tengan la oportunidad de, de ellos desarrollarse en su vida. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, as a Staten Island Ferry staff alum, I can tell you how critical our partnership is with the Coast Guard. We have Commander Stacey Weist here today, who is the Chief of Inspections for Stector, New York. Commander? Thank you so much. Hi, and good morning to everyone. I want to thank the Commissioner, uh, the bishops, our elected officials, their staff, friends of the ferry, and especially the friends and family of Dorothy Day for being here today. Um, I'm active duty military, so that means I move a lot, right? I'm not a native Staten Islander, but in the last three years that I've been here, I've really learned to love this island and its people. I am not Catholic, but I recently learned about Dorothy Day when I found out the ferry was gonna be named after her because that's kind of my job to know things about ferries, right? Um, shortly after that happened, my daughter came home from school and she was very excited about her religion class that day. And I'm not going to lie, she doesn't get often excited about religion class. <laughs> but the reason she was so excited was because that day she had learned about Dorothy Day. She came home and frantically told me all about her. From that time I saw a change in my daughter, she has devoted herself to volunteering frequently going into food banks and um, doing amazing things. And I think a lot of that was because of Dorothy Day. Um, so I could, I could tell the impression was long-lasting. 
because about a year and a half later, she had just graduated from eighth grade. She was getting ready to go into high school at St. Joseph's Hill Academy, and her yearbook came in the mail. I opened the yearbook that she wasn't interested in looking at, and there was a quote under her picture that said, well-behaved women seldom make history. So um, definitely, uh, you know, I looked at her again, and I was like, what was that about? And she goes, Dorothy Day. (laughs) So today I'm obviously here representing Captain Merchant. She's the captain of the port and the officer in charge of marine inspection. Uh, She really would have liked to have been here today. Um, Like you were told, I'm the chief of vessel inspections. I have a team of about 45 marine inspectors that inspect vessels here in the port. We do about 1,200 foreign flag vessels each year, 900 U.S. flag vessels, 326 of which are passenger vessels. This port sees about 50 million passengers, one of the biggest in the entire country, if not the largest, kind of flip-flopping between us and Seattle. Um, So we are very grateful for our relationship with the Staten Island Ferry. It's been amazing working with John and his team here. We're very appreciative to them. And now for the, for the reason I'm really here, and that's to present this certificate of inspection. So this is kind of the, the ferry's license to operate, if you will. Okay? So if I could get um, John Garvey and the commissioner to please come up. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Are you going to put some fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. This is it. Let's do it. Well, we're ready, right? Yeah, we're ready. You've got to take that thing on board with you. Thank you. No problem. Take your time. How exciting that was. Thank you so much. The Archbishop of the Archdiocese of New York, Timothy Carlin Dolan, sends his regrets today. Cardinal Dolan has spoken eloquently for Dorothy Day's case for canonization. I know that we have very special guests from the Archdiocese with us today. Today, in his eminence's deed, I am pleased to introduce Bishop John O'Hara to offer remarks. Bishop O'Hara. God raises up prophets to disturb the comfortable and to comfort the disturbed. Oh, my. Oh, my. You don't have to go to the Holy Land to find prophets. All you have to do is come to Staten Island, our Holy Land, our saint, our Dorothy Day, whom the Lord called over the years, and then an encounter on the South Shore, on the beach, with a sister of charity, he began drawing her closer and closer and closer. As he formed those prophets of old, so too did he form this great woman, and empowered by the faith which she embraced, being received into the church, receiving the sacraments, As our Lord sent forth the apostles on the Mount of the Ascension, he sent her forth to bring order out of the chaos of these times. Oh my, she lives the Beatitudes. She lives the corporal works of mercy. She is not to be admired, she is to be imitated. And as we set sail today on this vessel which bears her name, the servant of God, who we pray one day will be St. Dorothy Day. I think she's St. Dorothy Day already. There you are. But who am I? I'm semi-retired. I don't have anything to say about that. Let's, as we get on this boat, sail the choppy waters with her. Stand tall against the headwinds which sometimes can cause us to falter. And may we, like her, ask for that vision that sees goodness, love, and dignity in every single person, and that spark of divinity which in her was a fire, 
which enabled her to reach out and see that presence of the divine in each and every single human person. We live in a society that is divided, that is polarized, that is violent, and God has raised up a prophet from Staten Island. It's not just about ferry boats. Oh, no. It's about a woman with a vision that is very clear, very clear today, a vision that we need to embrace, celebrate, and activate in our own lives. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you all. Thank you, Bishop O'Hara. Now our musical interlude. At this time, I'd like to ask Anthony Donovan to come up for a short musical interlude. Anthony was a crucial member of our ceremony planning committee. While they set up, can I ask all of the members of the event planning committee to wave their hands? Thank you all for your help. The ceremony and the beautiful program would not have been possible without them. Thank you to all. Anthony told us he had a band inspired by what is perhaps Dorothy Day's most famous quote. Dorothy Day spoke her mind and did so very directly. She once said, and I quote, our problems stem from our acceptance of this filthy, rotten system. Well, Anthony is joined here on stage today with at least a couple of members of the Filthy Rotten System Band. Anthony, we have to go quick. Yes, we have to go quick. This is Bud Courtney, who's really the founder of this band. God bless. Just like to mention real quick that this Monday will be the 90th. 9-0 anniversary of the founding of the Catholic work. And this song is by someone that helped clean up this harbor 70 years ago. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Let's have a round of applause. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move Martha up. At this time, I'd like to ask Martha to come up. Um, she is Dorothy Day's granddaughter. As the commissioner noted, Martha continues her grandmother's proud legacy of activism, and we're so pleased to have her. Martha? I'll make this very quick. This is uh, from Dorothy herself. Um, and she wrote it in January of 1942. We are at war, a declared war, with Japan, Germany, and Italy. But still, we can repeat Christ's words each day, holding them close in our hearts, each month printing them in the paper. Our works of mercy may take us into the midst of war. As editor of The Catholic Worker, I would urge our friends and associates to care for the sick and the wounded, to gro the growing of food for the hungry, to the continuance of all of our works of mercy in our houses and on our farms. We understand, of course, that there is and that there will be great differences of opinion, even among our own groups, as to how much collaboration we can have with the government in times like these. 
There are differences more profound, and there would be many continuing to work with us from necessity or from choice who do not agree with us as to our position on war, conscientious objection, etc., but we beg that there will be mutual charity and forbearance among us all. Because of our refusal to assist in the prosecution of war and our insistence that our collaboration be one for peace, we may find ourselves in difficulties, but we trust in the generosity and understanding of our government and of our friends and to permit us to continue to use our paper to preach Christ crucified. And may the Blessed Mother Mary of beautiful love and of fear and of knowledge and of holy hope pray for us. Thank you, Martha. Martha. We'll be boarding soon. We have about a, a moment, and I'd like to ask Kevin and Deidre to please come up. They are with the Dorothy Day Cornell Center of Manhattan College, and I'm going to ask you to speak. Great, yeah. So th on behalf of the newly created Dorothy Day Center at Manhattan College and the Dorothy Day Guild, we'd like to really thank the city and the Department of Transportation for honoring Dorothy and all those who stand up for the poor and stand up against war with the naming of this vessel. We're going to have a brief uh, prayer service right after the ferry docks uh, before you get to the escalators So on, in the terminal. So please uh, join us, and we pray that people are inspired by her, especially young people, as they ride this ferry. I just want to add my thanks to Kevin's and say thank you to the city officials. Thank you to everyone who came, who turned out here today. And just to observe that, you know, the ferry took Dorothy back and forth from her busy life in the Lower East Side to recharge at Staten Island. And sometimes that ferry ride was the first leg of an even longer journey. Her vision, her message has gone out all over the world. And isn't that tremendous? So from my grandparents in Cleveland, Ohio, to coming here to the city, her vision lives on, and the new generations are hearing. So I'd just like to end with my remarks with inviting you to join the Guild, because just as the ferry is a vehicle that takes us back and forth, the Guild is a vehicle. It's not only about her canonization, because as we know, she already is, we believe, we, she is a saint, but it's a way to get that message to keep spreading and to keep going out. So please take a look at our website and consider joining the Guild. And again, thank you so much for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this, this concludes our ceremony. I would just like to remind you to please look at some of the plaques that are installed at the top of the stairs and on the starboard side of the boat, which is to our right, the McAllister Towing will be doing a water spray salute to Dorothy Day. Thank you.